How Minerals Form Minerals form through natural processes that occur in various geological settings over vast periods of time. Their formation depends on factors like temperature, pressure, chemical composition, and the environment in which they develop. Below are the main processes by which minerals form, explained in detail. 1. Crystallization from magma or lava. When magma, molten rock beneath the Earth's surface, or lava, molten rock on the surface, cools, minerals begin to crystallize. The cooling rate and the chemical composition of the molten material determine the types and sizes of the minerals formed. For example, slow cooling deep underground allows large crystals to grow, such as quartz or feldspar in granites. Rapid cooling at or near the surface results in small crystals or even volcanic glass, like obsidian. 2. Precipitation from solutions. Minerals can form from the evaporation or cooling of water containing dissolved elements. As the water evaporates or cools, the elements combine to form solid mineral crystals. This process often occurs in areas like evaporite deposits, where minerals such as halite, rock salt, and gypsum form as seawater or saline lakes evaporate. Hot springs, where minerals like calcite or silica precipitate out of mineral-rich water as it cools. 3. Metamorphism. Minerals can also form under intense heat and pressure deep within the Earth's crust during the process of metamorphism. Existing rocks are altered, and their minerals recrystallize into new ones without melting. Examples include the formation of garnet or storolite in metamorphic rocks. Graphite forming from organic carbon under high pressure and temperature. 4. Biological processes. Living organisms can contribute to mineral formation. For instance, corals and shellfish extract calcium and carbonate ions from seawater to build their shells, which over time can turn into limestone. Microorganisms can precipitate minerals like pyrite, iron sulfide, or magnetite, iron oxide, as part of their metabolic processes. 5. Hydrothermal processes. Minerals often form from hot, mineral-rich water moving through cracks and voids in rocks. These fluids, called hydrothermal fluids, deposit minerals as they cool or react with surrounding rocks. This process is common in the formation of valuable or minerals like gold, silver, and copper. 6. Weathering and surface processes. At or near the Earth's surface, rocks are exposed to weathering processes, such as chemical reactions with water, air, or organic materials. These processes break down rocks and minerals, sometimes forming new minerals like clay minerals from the weathering of feldspar. Iron oxides, such as hematite or limonite, from the oxidation of iron-rich minerals. 7. Impact events. High-energy events, such as meteorite impacts, can create extreme pressure and temperature conditions, leading to the formation of rare minerals. For example, diamonds can form in impact craters. Unique minerals like cosite and stishovite, high-pressure forms of quartz, can also form during impacts. 8. Direct crystallization from vapor. In volcanic environments, some minerals form directly from gases. For instance, sulfur crystals can form near volcanic vents where sulfur-rich gases condense. Each of these processes is a part of the dynamic system of the Earth, and they often overlap. For example, Minerals formed in one way may later be altered by another process, creating complex mineral associations and contributing to the Earth's rich geological diversity. Process of Mineral Formation The process of mineral formation, known as mineralogenesis, occurs through various geological processes and environments that shape and alter the Earth's crust. Minerals form when specific conditions of temperature, pressure, and chemical composition are met, allowing atoms or ions to bond and organize into orderly crystalline structures. Below is a detailed explanation of the primary processes responsible for mineral formation. 1. Crystallization from magma and lava. Minerals form as molten rock, magma or lava, 
cools and solidifies. This process is one of the most fundamental ways that minerals are created and occurs in two main settings. Intrusive crystallization, slow cooling. When magma cools slowly beneath the Earth's surface, atoms have enough time to organize into large, well-formed crystals. Minerals such as quartz, feldspar, and mica form in this way, often resulting in igneous rocks like granite. Example, feldspar and quartz crystals in pegmatites, which are coarse-grained igneous rocks, are formed through slow cooling. Extrusive crystallization, rapid cooling. When lava cools quickly on the Earth's surface, crystals do not have as much time to grow. This results in smaller crystals or even a glassy texture, as seen in volcanic rocks like basalt or obsidian. Minerals like olivine, pyroxene, and amphibole are common in volcanic settings. 2. Precipitation from solutions. Minerals can form through the precipitation of ions dissolved in water. When a solution becomes supersaturated with certain elements, these elements combine to form solid mineral crystals. This occurs in several scenarios. Evaporation. As water evaporates, it leaves behind dissolved minerals, which crystallize into solid deposits. This process is common in arid environments where lakes and seas evaporate over time. Example, the formation of halite, rock salt, gypsum, and sylvite in evaporite deposits. Cooling of hot solutions. In hydrothermal systems, mineral-rich fluids travel through cracks and fractures in rocks. As these fluids cool or react with surrounding rocks, dissolved minerals precipitate. Example, quartz veins and metallic ores like gold, silver, and copper. 3. Metamorphism. Under intense heat, pressure, and chemically active fluids, existing rocks undergo metamorphism, during which minerals are restructured or new minerals form. Metamorphism occurs deep within the Earth's crust and alters the mineral composition without melting the rock. Recrystallization During metamorphism, existing minerals become unstable and rearrange into more stable forms. For example, limestone can transform into marble as calcite grains recrystallize under pressure. New mineral growth Under extreme conditions, new minerals form, such as garnet, storolite, and kyanite, which are stable at high temperatures and pressures. 4. Biological processes. Living organisms also play a role in mineral formation. These processes, termed biomineralization, involve organisms extracting ions from water to create solid structures like shells, bones, or microbial deposits. Shell and coral formation. Marine organisms such as mollusks and corals extract calcium and carbonate ions from seawater to build calcium carbonate shells and skeletons. Over time, these materials accumulate and form rocks like limestone. Microbial precipitation. Certain microorganisms can precipitate minerals as a byproduct of their metabolism. For example, bacteria in sulfur rich environments can produce pyrite, iron sulfide. 5. Hydrothermal processes. Hydrothermal processes involve the movement of hot, mineral-rich water through fractures and voids in rocks. These fluids often originate from magma chambers or deep within the Earth's crust. Mineral veins. As the hot fluid cools, minerals like quartz, calcite, or sulfide ores precipitate along fractures, forming veins. Example gold and silver deposits in quartz veins. Replacement reactions. In some cases, hydrothermal fluids chemically alter existing minerals, replacing them with new ones. This process, called metasomatism, can result in the formation of economically valuable minerals. 6. Weathering and surface processes. Weathering breaks down rocks and minerals at the Earth's surface due to interactions with water, air, and organic matter. New minerals may form as a result of these processes. Chemical weathering. Feldspar, a common mineral in igneous rocks, reacts with water and carbon dioxide to form clay minerals like kaolinite. 
Similarly, iron-rich minerals oxidize to form hematite and limonite. Mechanical weathering. Physical processes like freeze-thaw cycles break rocks into smaller pieces, which may expose new surfaces for chemical reactions, leading to mineral transformations. 7. Impact events. Meteorite impacts generate extreme heat and pressure, leading to the rapid formation of unique high-pressure minerals. Shock metamorphism. Minerals like cosite and stishovite, high-pressure forms of quartz, form during impact events. Example, the Sudbury Basin in Canada hosts nickel and copper ores that originated from a meteorite impact. Impact generated diamonds. The intense pressure of an impact can convert carbon-rich materials into diamonds, even on a small scale. 8. Direct crystallization from vapors. In volcanic environments, some minerals form directly from gases escaping through vents or fumaroles. Sublimation. Minerals like sulfur, native arsenic, or certain chlorides crystallize directly from hot volcanic gases as they cool and condense. Example. Bright yellow sulfur crystals near volcanic fumaroles. 9. Mineral formation in space. Some minerals form in extraterrestrial environments, such as meteorites or planetary surfaces. For example, olivine and pyroxene are common in meteorites. Minerals like trinitite form when meteor impacts melt terrestrial rocks. Factors influencing mineral formation. The specific minerals formed in each process depend on several key factors. Temperature and pressure, these control the stability of certain minerals. For example, graphite forms at low pressure, while diamond forms at high pressure. Chemical composition, the availability of specific elements determines the type of minerals that can crystallize. Time, slower cooling or longer exposure to conditions allows larger, well-formed crystals to grow. Environment, surface conditions, subsurface processes, or volcanic settings all influence the mineral formation process.